Hello, my name is John Miller with Internetic. Uh, Save a looking at a scam we got. This actually came into my cell phone via text. So kind of, I don't usually get these, so I decided I want to dive into it a little bit. In this case, we get this text from this number. It says, your parcel has got a tracking code waiting for check shipment at this address. So right off the bat, we got a couple, couple things we kind of stand out to me. Uh, parcel tracking, obviously, I haven't bought anything, at least not through them, Amazon Prime all the way. So immediately go, okay, something's weird with this. Tracking is spelled wrong, or again, that's a little weird. If this were an automated message from, say, Amazon or UPS or uh, some other vendor I bought it from, this thing would be, you know, checked, one would think. And Stony Ship, don't know what that is. Uh, so if I bought it from something from, from Amazon, from CW, from whatever, it'd be coming from them, from UPS. So I got this pasted over. So I'll have to retype it. Let's pull up Chrome. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, just so you know, we're, this is not my computer. I'm actually logged into one of the computers we use in our cybersecurity lab. So Stony Ship, okay, that's a bad sign from already. So this address, if we take off this little bit here, should go somewhere. So like with, with UPS, if you type, if you take off the track information, it would still go to UPS. In this case, this goes nowhere. So of note, 404 does not mean that there's nothing there. That means there is a server there, but no one's home. I think it's kind of like knocking at someone's door and they're not home. The house is still there, just no one's in it right now. So there is a server at the other end here. It's just not responding at this address. But we can redo that and let's see what we get. So it's like we got a redirect. So instead of going to Stony Ship, it sends it over to partialshipment.net. So let's see what happens if we take that out and do the same thing, just for giggles. That looks like we got nothing there. Okay. So yeah, so there's nothing at, nothing at that site. The site does respond. There is, I mean, it is just loading web pages. So there's nothing at that web page. So this is, we've already had several flag to say this is bad. This is something we should not be going to in most cases. Uh, if you were one of their client computers, we have a lot of layers of defense to prevent this sort of thing from happening in the first place. In this case, this cybersecurity lab machine is basically unprotected, so we're getting further than we normally would. But, see a problem here, partial shipment. So we got redirected from Stony Ship, yes, yeah, Stony Ship, to partial shipment to a Verizon web page. This is kind of interesting. The Verizon says, okay, none of these are clickable. Actually, though, this whole top line is all one, so I kind of say move around, is all one uh, big image here. Uh, let's see, that actually is Base64. So actually pulling that straight out of, what they're doing is, with Base64, that image is actually embedded in the website. So rather than, let's see if I can do it for one of these other ones. Yeah, so rather than, than host then pulling is out of some other server, they have actually got embedded into the web code. Uh, it's kind of a clever way of getting around some filters or preventions. Uh, that's neat. This is a cool thing they've done there. Uh, so you click it around. Yeah, none of these things actually work. I'm not sure it's actually text. That could be just be an image. Uh, so, so I won. Well, good for me. What I win? Uh, actually, let's find out. So I won an iPad. Okay, cool. Let's. Uh, I want it delivered. Well, of course, I'm lazy. Let's see. So again, uh, we've already jumped to several hoops where this is not, this should not be trusted. Partial shipment, uh, rise in those things. Uh, this curiosity, this actually does have an SL certificate. Uh, so when you see HTTPS, that means that actually is encrypted using SSL. Uh, that's, that's very common these days. So that doesn't necessarily mean you trust the site. Almost everyone's got SL these days. So I'm trying to just click over there, but Chrome is fighting with me. Come on, let me see. Okay. It does have SL still. That's kind of interesting. Uh, you can get those for very easily, though. So I've got what's called a Legends. So I've got a bunch of these characters I've already pre-created for this sort of use. They're not real people. They're not real addresses. This, this, this stuff I've made up for playing with scammers. Uh, let's zip code. That's kind of neat. Uh, they took the time to actually autofill based on zip code. Uh, a lot of sites don't do that. Like even legit sites don't do that. So that's kind of neat on their part. So we got a Gmail address. So these are accounts I control. 
for, for testing purposes. So this is where they actually get you. So previously, they actually did get that information. So they have my fake name, email address, address. So they can do a little bit with that. Not a lot, but it gets you enough for some social engineering attacks or uh, for scamming other people or just what have you. It's another piece of information they can use for something I don't want them to do. So now they're actually asking for credit card information. This is enough where they can actually bill this credit card. If you were a fake credit card, I have a fake one. Uh, so it's saying we don't want one dollar shipping fee, retail price. So that's not spelled right. So retail, retail, whatever. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, can I uncheck that? No, so I cannot uncheck. Say I don't try. Uh, I'm not over 18. So interesting. Yeah, most of these things I can't click on. Uh, so I'm not sure if they're images. You page source. How do they got that set up? Ooh, need some word wrap here. So it looks like they've actually got it all dumped into. What are they doing here? It looks like they're grabbing clicks. They're doing a decode. Adjump.com click. Okay. So they kind of got us all bundled up into a nice little package, so you can't you can't see a whole lot. Uh, I'll try to dig it more into what this thing's actually doing in my own time. I don't want to tie up a lot of time on just on tech stuff. I want to show kind of how the scam works more than that. So grab our fake credit card information. Four twenty four West CV two nine. So if you're not familiar with um, CVVs. Is, is part of an algorithm. So it takes these numbers, so your card number, your expiration date, uh, I think a couple other things too, and it outputs, if it runs through this math, it outputs the CVV. All CVV really does is check if those check sums equal the CVV. So it's a way of saying, do that does this number, and this number, this number, all equal something. There's more math behind that. I don't know what the math is specifically, but I, I kind of have a rough idea how that works. So that's how kind of, if you type in a like uh, go to a website and you type in a bad CV or you missed fingered or whatever, it can immediately turn back and say, hey, that's a bad one, because uh, they don't have to actually contact your bank to find out. They have a uh, part of the algorithm in there that says, do these numbers match? But let's see what happens if I do this. Well, so out of, uh, they don't out of stock. Well, that's a shame. So it's going to redirect us somewhere else to this is over to another site. Uh, that's interesting. So this one does let me click on. So winnerwishlist.com. So again, obviously some some problems here. We jump from Sony Ship, which already looked shady and scammy, to that fake Verizon website with parcel shipment, I think it was, to Winner Wishlist. So if you've gotten this far into the scam, you're kind of going, you should be really going, something's really, really wrong here. And this is obviously an issue. Uh, so... One thing I like to do is, if it cooperates with me, give me that. I'm look at the domain. So I use, a lot of times I use whois.sc. This lets you look up uh, information about domains and IP addresses and such. So I just want to look at a domain and see I am not a robot, I believe. Uh, does it count them here? I don't know. Let's find out. It does. Okay. So you can kind of see some more information about this website. Who Who owns it? Now, at least they own the domain. So domains and websites don't necessarily have to be on the same server. Uh, so not a whole lot on this one. It looks like they've redacted almost everything. That really won't stop me, though. So on my own time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact Dynadot and their, a couple of their registrars and such and try to track back where this thing is hosted. Contact them and tell them, hey, you've got a, a scamming site being hosted on your service. Uh, it, I, it's the thing I just do as a matter of course, where I usually get this taken down. I usually get a few taken down per month. It's not much, but do my little part. So this again, obviously we're at this point where there's no doubt, uh, well, from, from the get-go, there's no doubt this is a scam, but we'll dive one more level deep and see just what happens. So again, it's going to ask for credit card information. So they've already got this fake address, and now they want our fake credit card again. Let's kind of make it jump through hoops. This one is even kind of shadier. Uh, let's see what 
what shows for the SSL. So SSL certificates are encryption certificates, this little symbol here. Uh, what it means is the connection between your browser and the web server is encrypted. Uh, most people will say that people cannot see what you're, you're viewing because of that. That's not really accurate. Uh, there are, in like, especially in enterprise environments, there are ways of doing what's called man in the middle, to where it will see it basically your SSL certificate goes to the firewall, and the firewall has its own SSL certificate that puts on basically in place of that out to the web server to wherever you're going, so it can see what's going on. Uh, it's generally like a protection thing. Uh, SSL is 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 very common now. Almost every website is going to have it as long as it's at least somewhat legit. Even like personal blogs, you can get like a, a certificate for, I think it's $70 per year, uh, maybe less than that. Depends on where you go to get it. Uh, this one is actually being issued by Cloudflare. So Cloudflare is called a content delivery network. What it does is it makes a cached version of your website and puts it geographically closer to someone that tracks your website. So say your website is hosted in, in Washington State and someone's accessing it in Florida. There's a cached version of your site in a data center in Florida. So it just makes it faster than to load it by like a few seconds, not a few seconds, but like a second or half a second. Uh, it just adds a little bit of speed. In this case, the, the scammers have kind of hidden their stuff behind a Cloudflare uh, CDN. And that's not a too big a deal. It's, it's interesting that this one is more technical than I normally see from scammers. So it's, I appreciate the effort they've gone through. Oh, I put that in the wrong place. So let's put these in again and see if we can go deeper down this demented little rabbit hole. Actually, let's try it. I'm going to do a mistype the CVV, see if it, if it flags it. So it did not do a CVV check. And send things over to onlinemetrics.net. I saw it down there. Let's see where it's going to bounce it over to next. Okay, while it's doing that, online. So we saw it pulled that. Was it .net? Yeah, .net. We saw that pop up there. Okay, so it's got nothing there. Interesting. Yep. So in the end, their kind of scam chain ran out. Uh, so they pushed it over to somewhere. And that one, uh, DS Probe, this is not there. This one is air cache timed out. Nothing there either. So they, we jumped through two, three levels of their scam to finally where they they sent us to some random address that doesn't exist anymore uh, for whatever reason. It's like it's, it's still thinking about it. It's going to probably redirect us again here. But in the end, uh, we've kind of gone as deep as, as, as we want without beating a, a dead digital horse. So it started with this nice little text I got. Uh, Sony ship, you know, I got our immediate flags here. Random phone number, random text saying I ship something. It's got some misspellings with some random uh, domain. All these things add up very quickly to don't trust this. If you do go through it, it took us over to another site that said partialshipment.com, I think it was. Again, it that w obviously was not a shipment tracking website. So if you expected to, like, if you said, okay, this looks somewhat legit, I don't know. You click on this to check your shipment, and you get some Ryzen fake website that says you we want something. Obviously, something's wrong there. You need to bail out. Uh, something's very wrong there. So kind of as a good rule, if something looks too good to be true, it is. And you're not, it's, you don't just get money out of nowhere. You don't win the lottery if you don't sign up for it. There are Nigerian, there are no Nigerian princes that are going to whisk us away into the sunset to live with their $50 billion they just need us to save from their bad grandmother or whatever the story is they usually give you. No. Always be wary. Uh, paranoia on the internet is, I think, perfectly healthy. Uh, there is The, the risk-reward for these gamers is so much in favor of the reward because it's such a low risk to them that they will... They don't... They are, this is a, a commercial business for them. So it is our duty or our protection as people of the, the denizens of the web to be paranoid uh, it's because it's so easy for them to, to scam you uh, or to 
to get their scam out there, where they can blast out to, to 5 million email addresses and a few th million text messages for a few cents-ish. I don't know what the actual cost for doing that is, but I'm gonna, it's very low. So be paranoid, be safe. If in doubt, you can always give us a call. Uh, we're happy to look at these things with you. Uh, John Miller, Internetic, 888-526-1631. Thanks, y'all.